A FAM production. Furniture and mattress. FAM.news. We are seeing a huge shift in buying behavior, and it resembles pre-pandemic times. Rising costs, soaring interest rates. It's got many people feeling uncertain about the economy. What does the future look like, and how can retailers compete? We have Ed Haluska, the Chief Commercial Officer with Genesis Credit, and the Dos Marcos Show starts in 60 seconds. Listen to this information we got from Genesis Credit. According to Experian, 40% of Americans have a FICO score below 700. That means four of every 10 sales are potentially lost because a customer won't qualify for enough credit or at all through traditional financing. Fact is, customers deserve a second chance at affordable financing, and no one believes that more than Genesis Credit. As the industry's premier second look financing solution for over 20 years, Genesis provides high revolving credit lines for customers with FICO credit scores above 550. And Genesis wants retailers to know that, hey, if you're seeing lower credit lines and fewer credit approvals from your first finance option, let Genesis Credit take a second look. Find the right fit for your customer's financial needs at genesis-fs.com forward slash the fam. Be honest, how much do you spend each year on product photography? Aperture's the answer, Kinsley. Products and more products and vignettes and tens of thousands of dollars in reshoots. I mean, (laughs) the reshoots. And then it doesn't look consistent. Aperture is the answer. Look, the world's changed a lot. And one of the good changes is the tech driving Aperture. Aperture is the answer. All right, Quinn, you don't have to say Aperture is the answer anymore. So why don't you go and tell them why? Because it's the only tech company that William Sonoma ever bought. And for good reason, Kinsley. They had the same problems with product photography, and now they don't. And now you won't. Let's say you need a mattress photo. Boom. Place that beautiful bed inside Aperture's nifty 20 by 20 beauty box, press a button, and the Aperture machine does all of the rest, all the lighting and cropping and shadows, all of it. And better yet, once you need a different background or different lighting, no reshoots. Your visual factory in a box does all the work. And you know what? You save some money, you save some time, and you create product photography that can move at the speed of your ideas. Start today at OutwardInc.com and tell them Dos Marcos sent you. Because why? Aperture's the answer. answer. Welcome to the Dos Marcos Show with Mark Kinsley and Mark Quinn, where mattress and furniture leaders gather to grow, get the inside scoop, tell stories, and... Take tequila shots. Uno, dos, tequila! Welcome aboard. Here's your passport to a planet filled with the mattress industry's brightest minds and biggest ideas. The galaxy's greatest mattress podcast has liftoff in three, two, one. Welcome hello. to the Dos Marco Show. Hello, hello, hello. Mark How Quinn, you, I'm Mark Mr. Kinsley, and we have Ed Haluska on the show today. Can you believe it? I know. I was going to say you look great, but not nearly as good as Ed Haluska, the chief commercial officer for Genesis. And he's uh, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Ed, like, move your head down. I want to see that choo-choo train behind you. There you go. Chattanooga, Choo-choo. Tennessee. I need a sound effect. True. <laughs> what? Are you ready? Never mind. I can't do a train. Uh, Ed, thanks for being on the show. Appreciate it. Glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. That's um, It's my pleasure. You bet. Um, Hey, listen, we want to jump right into it because what you guys are doing is so important. The consumer finance piece to our industry is so big. Uh, It's what really drives, it's an engine driving a lot of sales, obviously big ticket, furniture, mattresses, and finance solutions are a big part of that. You guys have seen a massive shift, have you not, in consumer buying behavior? Talk to us a little bit about that and what people listening to this show really need to understand. Yeah, I mean, I think um, as we go towards into, you know, closing out the third quarter and going into the fourth quarter of this year, um, you know, it's been a tough year all around. Um, one of the things that we're watching very closely, and I think all of the retailers we work with are watching, is is really door swings. Um, you know, volume in the industry overall is down. Um, this year has performed much differently than 2020 or 2021. Um, And so there's a lot of folks who I think are out there trying to figure out what's next. Um, And so in the macro environment with raising economic rates um, and uh, all of the things happening out in in our world today, 
Um, I think there's a lot of uncertainty and it's, it's portraying itself in, in the consumer buying behavior, which overall, I think there's less consumption today than there's been over the last 24 months. All right, let's get into that real quickly. So less consumption, you're paying attention to door swings and you're paying attention to door swings because when those are down, you need bigger tickets in order to meet your revenue goals. So take us into that. You've got a timid consumer coming into uh, coming into a retail store, for example, what are you seeing happening with retailers to 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 capture that business? And what are some of the strategies that that they're deploying that you've noticed? Yeah, you know, I mean, today, you know, that's a, a great question because I think as we look across, you know, the consumer finance portfolios, um, everybody seems to be down in terms of overall volume, and so. I think that's potentially, Mark, one of the single biggest questions in the industry is with the cost of goods increased, um, with the uh, interest rates increased, with people trying to figure out how to pay for groceries, how to put gas in their car to get to work, you know, what money is left over for them to buy a couch or a mattress or a sofa? Um, and I don't know that anyone has articulated a good response to that just yet. You know, you, you made a comment before the show and, and you just kind of referred to it, right? So with inflation, uh, people are really focused on the what they have to have and then all the aspirational purchases. I, I, I We've talked about it before on this show, Ed, like in terms of importance of marketing, right? So if you build value in your products and you make the products that you sell important to the consumer, instead of something that they don't necessarily need. So raise it up, build more value in those things. Then you'll move up higher on that list. Cause if you're stuck at the bottom of the list, especially now you're, uh, you're mm. going to be in big trouble. Is that kind of how you see it? I, I do. I do. And I think, you know, I classically over the years have broken the world into, into two buckets, wants and needs. And, um, and, and, and those things that are considered needs, perform more strongly in, in challenging economic times than, as you said, the aspirational uh, consumption. And, you know, selfishly working for a consumer finance company, you know, our job is to, to interject that ability to buy um, and use financing to, to bridge a gap that may exist because of times like today. And Ed, I think we're getting into a conversation that is so critical for retailers to understand, which is you have people that in the credit world, I think it's referred to as potentially near prime, right? So you have your prime customers who are credit worthy at the highest level, and then you have people who are near prime. Well, that's a big swath of Americans who represent a lot of dollars who are having to make hard decisions. Like you said, they're force ranking the needs at the very top and then the wants fall underneath that. And so right. as a furniture and mattress retailer, talk to us, talk to the retail community about these near prime customers. Give us some, give us some data around that. Give us some perspective on serving that giant portion of the population. Sure, sure. Um, you know, so when we talk about the near prime community, um, I, always, I always use a phrase, life happen happens along the way, right? And so the profile of the consumer for the last 24 months, um, maybe it was a little artificially inflated, maybe it was a little artificially insulated. Um, and as we've come into 2022 and, and some of the headwinds that are presenting themselves both now and, and in the future, um, some of the consumers can't do or don't act like they were acting before. So maybe that prime consumer um, lost a job maybe that prime consumer um, got a divorce, you know, the things that happen to all of us during life, and that may have changed their ability to perform as their former credit profile uh, suggests. So as we go into both this year and going forward, you know, that near prime consumer probably still believes that they're a prime consumer, um, but if they get declined from a prime lender, then the question is, is how do they perceive their ability to be financed? What are they willing to accept from a financing offer? And that's where a group like, like Genesis comes in. 
we allow folks who, for whatever reason, good, bad, or indifferent, weren't able to get financing from a prime lender um, to be able to still get very acceptable and reasonable lending um, from us without having to go to a higher rate, uh, higher interest rate cost um, and different types of lenders that, that, that don't fit our same profile. Ed, is there a financial impact to these near prime customers who are offered a solution, let's say that doesn't match up with where they are? Yeah, I think, I think where that mostly will manifest itself um, at the highest level is whether they're going to make a purchase. So as the retailer thinks about the financial solutions that they're going to provide to their consumers, you know, there's always the concept of, am I giving Mark the right type of credit? Because if I'm not, he may not buy. Am I giving Sally the right type of credit? Because if I'm not, they may buy and they may default. Um, there's a lot of different paths you could go down to, but as you look at a full financial solution or strategy for a retailer, making sure you're getting the right financing to your consumer base is, is critically important. So, so Ed, there's so many <clears throat> different ways that retailers can go about providing those solutions. Can you talk us through a little bit like, you know, what is it that the retailers that you're you're working with today inside the, the furniture mattress appliance industries, like, what are they telling you? Like, why is it that Genesis is such a, a better solution for them? Well, I mean, I think we're, we've been in this industry for over 20 years um, and, and experience does matter. Um, we've seen up cycles. We've seen down cycles. We have a, a really solid um, capital stack. And, and, and so we're not going anywhere and, and we intend to be here for a long while. And, you know, if you use the customer experience as your true North, as we do, we're trying to make sure that that consumer is getting what they need when they need it at a reasonable price. Um, and we're not the solution for everyone, but in these economic times, as some of the, the, the macroeconomic headwinds happen, I think that we're a very, good solution for a lot of folks who may not qualify for prime financing um, anymore. This is called second look financing. That's the term I've heard. What, yes. Okay. For people that don't know, what does that actually mean? Break, break it down in terms of how it's tiered and what it means. Yeah. So um, there's a whole community of financial institutions, mostly banks um, that are what are referred to as prime lenders. And, and prime is a, is a reference back to the FICO hierarchy. Uh, FICO stands for Fair Isaacs Corporation. And so all of us have a credit score from one of the three big bureaus. And so usually what you'll find is that a prime consumer is, is normally around 700 up to the top of the, the spectrum, 850. And then when you think about a secondary or a second look consumer near prime, um, you would probably see that person being in the 700 to you know, 550, 700 to 580. And then there's a whole other community of, of service providers called tertiary, um, tertiary standing for third level, and they provide consumers financing um, that is on the riskier side. So um, to say it a different way, you have what's called super prime, the best credit scores of the country, then you have prime. Underneath prime, you have what's called near prime, then usually non-prime, and then subprime. And so at Genesis, we like to cater to the folks, we mostly say near prime, prime and near prime. And there are some folks in the lower levels who also qualify based upon their application. And so for the, the near prime customer, there's there are situations I've heard where they could get approved as a prime customer, but they're gonna have a very low credit line. So they don't have as much buying power for example, so that retailer is not going to have as big of a ticket. And then if they don't get primary approval, a lot of times they have to resort to these higher interest payment plans and that's going to you know, be higher monthly premiums um, mm -hmm. and it can lower their future buying power. So there, there's a lot of dynamics here at play the retailer needs to think about so that there's a match. W what else did I miss there in terms of summarizing, thinking about that person for where they are? Yeah. No, I think I think you, you said it well, Mark. Um, when you really think about it, and again, in the pandemic in the last you know 24 months, um, 
I think that you saw very low default rates. We had very low interest rates. We all went out and bought whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted. We had lots of cash. The government was kind enough to give us more cash. And so, you know, quite frankly, in some respects, although COVID and the pandemic was awful, um, from a buying and a consumption standpoint, there was a ton of, of, of consumption that took place. And as we roll into 2022, and you think about those pieces that have changed, you know, the, the prime lender who probably extended and loosened up their credit may be saying, well, maybe I shouldn't be lending there. I've got to be more prudent in going down the spectrum. The tertiary lender who probably loosened up and was going up and down um, probably is rethinking their strategy. And so for a group like Genesis, where we sit in the middle of those two, we've got the ability to really rationalize for folks who say, yes, I'm a prime customer, I'm not going to pay X, or, hey, the prime lender only gave me Y, and I really need Y times two or three, I need a different solution. And so we can play both of those places and expand an accordion as needed. We you know, are talking you... with, uh, we're talking with Ed Haluska, the Chief Commercial Officer with Genesis Credit. Ed, you're filling in some gaps in, in thinking, I know, for a lot of retailers and a lot of people in this industry, especially as we head into what feels like uncharted waters, but also at the same time, these uncharted waters feel a little bit more like pre-pandemic times. So it's good to kind of know that we've gone through this, this donut hole of uncertainty in life and in business. And now here on the other side, okay, these conditions are not completely unprecedented and it's, and it's time to get back to, you know, understanding the consumer and their current state of behavior, because that's going to allow us to just serve them better. Quinn, um, where does your head go around how this relates to the retailer in terms of um, using credit, using near prime, using these strategies and this thinking that Ed is talking about and deploying that on the sales floor? Yeah, I, I think what is so important is that the retailers out there have a good solid solution where they're getting high approval rates. Uh, the user interface is simple. Um, the people that you know are falling in the prime and, and moving into subprime, that there's solutions for them. And I think you know, hearing Ed talk about what they do and, and their ability to service people that just make like, it's all about the customer experience, right? I mean, when they come in, I mean, if you get denied credit or, you know, if, if things have been a little tougher for you, that's not easy stuff to deal with. People get take that stuff very personally. And Ed, it really sounds like some of the stuff you guys are doing uh, will really help retailers keep those consumers connected to the business. I mean, that's, that's our desire. Um, you know, I, I usually refer to myself as an operator, so I will, I'll, I'll do a credit app. I'll go to the store. I like to spend time on the floor. And, and you said something extremely important is that consumer, when they apply for credit, it's extremely personal to them and no one likes to be told no, and nobody likes to be told no in front of a group of people. So again, going back to that, that customer experience. Um, you know, a great customer experience in conjunction with exactly what you want to buy and it's available in stock and you can walk out is a, is really a home run. And then you start deconstructing those, that home run into smaller wins if you don't have the pieces to the puzzle. So, you know, we, we talk a lot about purpose Ed. I'm going to, I'm going to keep you on a similar track here. So when you made a decision to join Genesis, you did it because of something, right? So tell us a little bit about the people you're working with there, uh, why why you're part of that business and tell us a little bit about purpose, right? Like what's the purpose mm -hmm. in it for you guys and, and, and how you look at that business? I think we heard a little bit about that in your last answer, but take us a little deeper there. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, it, the reason I came to Genesis is because I think there is a tremendous need out there. And I think it'll continue to grow um, for that recognition of the near prime consumer. Um, you know, a lot of people have a lot of guesses where this, th this industry and where our economy will go over the next 24 months. Um, I think we've got the opportunity to provide a rock solid product and a rock solid solution 
Uh, we allow for a lot of customization. And at the end of the day, we're just trying to meet the consumer where they need to be met. Um, at the end of the day, we all get up and go to work because we want to make a good buck. I'm no different than anybody else. Um, but doing it with something that you're really proud of is, is kind of fun. Um, it's actually a lot more than kind of fun. It's really fun. And so that's my, my deal is, you know, I think that we've got a tremendous organization. Uh, we have a really tremendous product. And when you work with folks like myself and, and the team that we've assembled, um, I think you'll see that, you know, we're just down to earth, rock solid people who want to provide a rock solid product. And one of the things that Quinn and I talk about behind the scenes is, okay, we wish the industry would move in X direction, you know, and for us, you know, in the, in the sleep business for so long, we really want to make sure the industry is positioning sleep as the foundation of good health with the pillars of fitness and nutrition and mental wellness sitting on top of that foundation of good sleep. So in, in the halls of Genesis, you know, in, in the zoom calls in the hallways in the private conversations, are there times when you feel like, you know, you're kind of slamming your head against the wall as a group and saying, why is nobody talking about this? This would make such a huge difference in people's businesses. What are those things that bubble up? Oof. That's a, a big, a big question. Good question. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a very good question. You know, I think it, at the end of the day, you know, one thing that I'm, I'm watching is, is retailer health, financial health. You know, we went from no inventory to now you hear that inventory is back and it's coming in droves. Um, but it's coming at a time where you're not seeing as many door swings. So folks are getting loaded up with inventory that they purchased X number of months ago. Um, and prices have, have, have increased. Um, and so, you know, we, you, you, you transition to promotional furniture and, and the lack there of it, that, that 499 sofa is no longer there. So what are you going to do for that consumer? And so I really think, um, you know, door swings are not the, the end all be all, but I mean, you've got a lot of retailers across the country who are trying to figure out their own uh, financial health and how can they continue forward? How can they sell more of their inventory? How can they absorb the cost of goods sold that they've eaten over the last 18 months? Um, and I'm not going to be so one-sided to say financing helps at all. It doesn't. That's, that's, that's not correct. But I think we provide a valuable product to at least help them increase same store sales, drive volume. And I think that will lead to more health to the, the retailers, especially on the small and mid-sized size. And, you know, something you said made me think here a second. Like, you know, Kinsley, something else we talk about is two ways to do business, right? You can drive them into your store. So traffic door swings is important, but the other side of it is sell more to the people in your building, right? Mm -hmm. And that's way less expensive because you're not having the cost of acquisition, the marketing, the, all of that. And so, but that's what you do. You, you, you give that consumer more spending power so that the retailer can max out the visit. So I, it's an interesting, I hadn't thought of it really that way before, but I mean, is that pretty much sum, sum up a lot of the benefit, right? Yeah, I mean, I, whether it's a new transaction right. with a new customer or a subsequent transaction with existing customers, both are incredibly important. And what you normally see in a lot of healthy businesses, not all, not all, but I mean, if you're able to drive that 30 to 40% repeat transactions in your financing portfolio, that's a healthy profile and it will really help you keep on increasing your same store sales. Ed, I have a question because Quinn just made me think about transactions. And a lot of times people think when you give them a good and they give you money, then it's over. And we are trying to encourage retailers and RSAs and retail managers to understand that the sale is the beginning of the relationship in relation to credit. Are there ways that credit can help manage that relationship or reintroduce opportunities to interface with that customer? Sure. Sure. Um, I think any financial partner you're working with should have a fulsome marketing and remarketing program to help the retailer. And so our core product being 
a revolving line of credit on a credit card, um, that gives you the function, right? You can go back and make subsequent purchases if you haven't exhausted your line. And then, you know, to use a, a, an economic term, you know, to have that invisible hand, you know, come back and have your partner marketing to your consumers, letting them know they have additional uh, dollars, letting them know they can come back to ABC store to make a subsequent purchase. Um, you know, that's the type of relationship you really want to foster. Yeah. And I mean, if you think about it in its simplest terms, if you see that somebody buys a dining room table and they didn't buy chairs, you know, you go, Hey, you have enough money to buy the chairs as well. And we have these new chairs that we just got in stock. So like you said, there's the invisible hand. There's also the opportunity to mine your existing customer information and connect that to the credit piece. So that then as an organization, you know, your partners at Genesis credit and you as ABC retailer can go out, serve those customers, be the one that they turn to when they have the need, uh, remind them that, that, that you're there and be top of mind and, and be top of mind from a, from a standpoint of service um, to their specific needs. It's a very relevant message to them instead of something that's spray and pray. And I bet there's all kinds of opportunities to mine your existing data like that and work with your credit data. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think you're correct, but we also have to remember, I really don't know a retailer out there that we that we work with or anybody in the industry. Um, everybody's still facing uh, uh, shortages of staff. I mean, it's still, again, that term macro, it's not just interest rates. It's just not the cost of goods, but you know, I don't know if you've tried to hire somebody recently, but it is extremely challenging. And so as long as that function stays problematic and you are trying to have, you have to pay more to get a person, it's hard to find good people and they're quitting more than they've ever quit. You know, that creates just a whole different dynamic of trying to say, and by the way, after we're overpaying you, you really don't want to be here. Are you really going to market great to our customers? Everybody can answer that for themselves. Some do, but I don't think it's a consistent pattern. Yeah. And this goes back to culture and creating purpose in the business. And that definitely flows from the top all the way down. Great, great reminders. Indeed. Great reminders. Hey, uh, Ed Haluska is the chief commercial officer with Genesis credit. You have an amazing team. We've gotten to know, uh, some of the folks from your team. And so thank you for, for helping retailers, helping us understand how credit interfaces with this changing consumer. And I have to say something before we get out of here. Happy birthday to your son. He is nine years old today. What so did you get, what did him he a, get for a, his birthday? That's what I want to know. He, my son is currently engulfed in Pokemon. So um, his sister was kind enough to get him one of those books where you can put all your Pokemon cards and you can trade with his buddies. And then his beyond that passion, he is a fanatical soccer player. So um, we got him one of those in yard nets. So he's a, uh, he's a pretty happy camper today. You, you oh, know, that is great. This is another book you could get him. I think he would love it. It's called come back to bed. It was written by Mark Hensley and Mark Quinn. And I think he, it would be a great bedtime story for him. It will put him right to sleep guaranteed. I, listen, <laughs> I, I will pick you up on it and no tequila needed, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell you our, our executive producer, yo, Adrian, uh, loves these little shot glasses. So the official beverage of the Dos Marcos podcast is tequila, tequila shot glasses. But for nine year olds, uh, her little boy, Finn has turned these into dipping cups. So you could put ah. ketchup in them and ranch dressing and you got it all figured out. She actually came home one day and uh, the kids had the Dos Marcos shot glasses filled with ketchup and different condiments. And they said, mom, thank you for getting us these dipping glasses. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> then she yelled well, at me and said, why did you take my tequila glass away from me? That's there. No. I just thought she was going to go straight to the bottle, but that's a different story, right? <laughs> well, happy birthday to your son. And uh, it feels, hey, it feels like a birthday to us whenever we get to meet great people like you. Ed, you're awesome. Thanks for being on the show. How can people get in touch with you? Um, you know, uh, you can either call or easier to email. I'm on LinkedIn. Email ed.haluska uh, at genesis-fs.com. Um, and I'm sure anybody could contact us, the Dose Show, and get my information as well. So, we will uh, be happy to do that. You can go over to fam.news, and we have our, our podium number at the very bottom right. You can just text us. 
if you want to get in touch with Ed, if you have any follow-up questions, if you have ideas for a show, we always want to hear from you and we're happy to help you get connected to anybody that's ever been on the show, especially Ed. Ed, thank you so much. Please pass along thank our thanks both. to the folks at Genesis. It's been great having you on the show. Have thanks, a great Ed. Friday. Thank you so much. You can bounce on it. Oh, oh. What is a hybrid? It's like peanut butter jelly, peanut butter chocolate. Hybrid so tight, there's no way that you could topple it. Hybrid on my wrist, that's a calculator watch. We add ourselves together and we take it up a notch. Got the airflow, yo, keep you cool as it get. Visco foam alone to make you drip sweat. Get a hybrid mattress, yes, you'll get better rest. Cool and comfortable, I'm hybrid like a sweater vest. You know the game, we're ahead of the sun. Cause the two of us together are way better than one. Cause I'm cool. Is ice. And I'm hot like a heater Bounce by the ounce Now, now we, we got, got it by the leader Well you take a spring And you wrap it up right You can sleep so smooth Or bounce all night yeah. Put two together Get a whole lot more Get the feel of the comfort core You can bounce on it Lay back You don't have to practice It's the best thing to happen To your mattress yeah. Get together to do it like I did Everybody get hybrid if you want somebody to get in your vicinity, you probably want to feel a little bit of a hybridity. Foam alone, out of five, maybe one star. Springs and foam, we're taking care of that lumbar. Mad back support, the best way to shack up or just get rest that won't mess your back up. Like a hot chick mixed with a particle physicist or a mullet. Party in the back of the business. Best of both worlds like Mars and Venus. The ultimate hybrid. Nothing short of cheap. Keeping it loose while keeping it tight We can make you sleep or play all night Put two together, get a whole lot more Get the feel of a comfort core You can bounce on it No stopping when the beat gets played back Springs keep it popping, foam keeps it laid back Party over here, get invited Everybody get hybrid Kitchen is charming when your bedroom's the most important part of the apartment. What kind of bed do you keep back there? Does your girl want to chill on a beanbag chair? Hell no. You need springs and foam. Because if that bowling ball don't bounce, you'll be sleeping alone. And if the bed don't react, then you can't get low. We, we got, got that type of bounce that won't spill your Merlot. So stick with us and you'll get rewarded. Because I'm so gentle. And I'm so supportive. Hybrid is where the magic is. And we just killed a song about mattresses. mattresses.